Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I want to resurrect this ICO 950B resistance capacitance comparator bridge. I inherited this late 1950s vintage test instrument a couple of months ago, and I want to add it to my stable electronic test gear. Because this is a vacuum tube unit, there are several components that should be replaced before we even try to power it up. I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. In this video, there's some hazards that really could injure you or worse. Because we're dealing with vacuum tubes, the voltages are much higher than in modern transistorized circuits. There are voltages of over 500 volts inside this instrument, which will give you a nasty shock that will, at best, really hurt you, or at worst, could kill you. If you don't feel comfortable working around these high voltages, then don't. If you're following along, then you're doing so at your own risk. Now let's get started. The ICO 950B resistor and capacitor tester was sold to electronic technicians in the late 1950s and early 1960s. It was offered as either a kit or factory assembled. I believe this one was a kit version. Because this unit is about 60 years old, the electrolytic and paper capacitors must be replaced before we power it up. The schematic shows the ones I'll replace even if they test okay. So let's open the case. There are eight screws in the front of the panel and one in the back. Of course, the first one gives me attitude. I'll come to back to that one later, offline. The unit looks very clean and appears to be well made. Now let's check to see what other components need to be replaced besides the capacitors. One component that typically fails is the voltage control, a 100,000 ohm wire round 4 watt potentiometer. The nichrome wire inside will sometimes break due to wear. I removed the back cover so I can inspect the winding and I'll check the resistance with an ohm meter. Eh, that's not good. Repairing wire wound pots is almost impossible, so I'll have to replace it. I also checked all the resistors and found that three were out of tolerance. Now it's time to find replacements. The capacitors and resistors were really easy to find once I found the right place to go. The big supply houses like Digikey and Mouser don't carry a large selection of capacitors suitable for vacuum tube repairs. However, I found exactly what I needed at Just Radios. The prices and selection were great, and they were really good to work with. I'll put a link to their website below. The wire wound pot was much more difficult to source. After a lot of searching, I found a 5 watt replacement pot on eBay. However, it was physically much smaller. Since there are over 500 volts across the terminals, I added a little shrink tubing that's on the leads to minimize any chance for flashover. Replacing the capacitors takes lots of patience. First I verify the values of the new capacitors and resistors before I install them. Then I carefully remove the tubes by gently rocking them in their sockets so I don't damage them. Then I'll change the components one at a time so I don't accidentally mix up the values. I like to completely remove the old component and clean off the terminals before installing the new one. 
And of course, there's usually something in the way that could be damaged with an errant touch of the soldering iron. I won't bore you with replacing all the capacitors. I'll just do one as an example. I use several different methods to remove the old component. Sometimes I'll use a solder sucker or solder braid. Sometimes I'll peel the wire away from the solder by using a set of sharp wire cutters. And sometimes I will heat the joint and then wiggle the component while the solder cools. And sometimes I have to use all the methods. That was the case for this bumblebee capacitor. Since modern polycapacitors are much smaller than the old paper capacitors, I had to shrink tubing to some of the new, longer capacitor leads to eliminate possible shorts. Next, I cleaned all the switches and controls with contact cleaner to get rid of 60 years of gunk. Then I reinstalled the knobs I had removed and made sure that they were properly aligned. Now it's time to reinstall the tubes. I carefully inserted them back into their sockets making sure not to damage them. Here is the 950B with the capacitors, resistors, and wire wound potentiometer replaced. In addition, I cleaned all the switches and controls with contact cleaner. The schematic shows all the components I replaced. The power cord was in good shape, so I didn't replace it. I know that some people would replace the cord with a polarized cord, but since this instrument has a power transformer, I felt it wasn't necessary for me to use it safely. Let's try powering up the ICO 950B. I plug it into my dim bulb tester to limit the current if there happens to be a short in the unit. A dim bulb tester is simply an incandescent light bulb wired in series with the power outlet that the unit is plugged into. And an incandescent bulb has low resistance at low currents, like when the bulb is cold, and high resistance at higher currents, like when the bulb is shining brightly. If the bulb is dark or very dimly lit during operation, then there aren't any direct shorts. If the bulb glows brightly, then there is trouble. This protects the unit during initial startup to limit any damage that defects in the unit might cause. After checking several resistance values as outlined in the construction manual, we are turn on the power. The filament in the 6X52 begins to glow immediately, 
a good sign. Within a minute, the magic eye tube begins to glow. So far, so good. Ah, uh, very good. As I turn the main value adjustment control, I notice some flickering in the magic eye tube. There appears to be a loose connection. I take an insulated adjustment tool and start to tap on various connections. It looks like the problem is one of the connections on the Magic Eye tube socket. I turn off and unplug the unit and then use a resistor to short out the connections in the area I'm going to work on. This safely discharges any residual charge in the capacitors that could cause a nasty jolt. I found one wire that had a bad connection so I resoldered it as well as a couple other connections in the area. That solved the flicker problem. Let's use this tester to check some of the capacitors that we pulled out of the ICO Model 950B capacitance bridge. Then we'll compare those values with the ones I get from one of the inexpensive Arduino-based LCR meters I got off of eBay. This paper and foil capacitor is rated at 0 0.02 microfarads at 400 volts. It's connected to the testing terminals and the range switch is set to 0 0.001 microfarad to 0.5 microfarad. To determine the capacitance, rotate the capacitance control until the magic eye opens as large as possible. In this case, the value is 0 0.029 microfarads, slightly greater than rated. Next, we'll check the DC leakage for this capacitor. Remember that the capacitor is rated at 400 volts DC. First make sure the voltage control is turned down to 0 volts. Then turn the range switch to paper mica test. Note that the magic eye is open. Slowly increase the voltage control. Make sure you don't touch the capacitor leads because they are carrying the high testing voltage. Here we see the magic eye start to close at 100 volts and fully closes at 250 volts, much lower than the 400 volt rating. This high DC voltage leakage makes this capacitor toast for this application. For comparison, let's check the same capacitor using the eBay LCR meter. After I short across the capacitor to remove any residual charge, I connect it to the LCR meter. This unit shows a value of 29.8 nanofarads, which is 0 0.0298 microfarads, and very close to the value obtained by the ICO tester. The V loss was 2.3%. The next capacitor I'll test is the main filter capacitor, this 8 microfarad 525 volt electrolytic. Electrolytic capacitors are usually the first to fail. Make sure the positive lead of the capacitor is connected to the positive lead of the tester or you could damage the capacitor. For this test, we'll set the range switch to 0.1 microfarad to 50 microfarad. Since the sweep of the capacitance dial produced no flicker in the magic eye, 
I'll try testing the capacitor with the eBay LCR meter. First discharge the capacitor under test and then hook it to the eBay LCR. This tester indicates a value of 1755 nanofarads which converts to 1.76 microfarads but the V-loss is 36 percent. Normally the V-loss is around 1 percent for a large electrolytic capacitor so even this cheap tester has found a problem with this capacitor. Let's go back to the ICO tester and see if we missed anything. Nope, there's no flicker even at 1.7 microfarad. Let's check the leakage. We'll select the electrolytic test on the range switch and as soon as we move the voltage above 5 volts the magic eye closes. Remember this is rated for 525 volts. This capacitor is destined for the trash. Next let's look at this 0 0.01 microfarad 400 volt bumblebee capacitor. On the ICO tester magic eye barely opens up at 0 0.17 microfarads. When we do a leakage test, the magic eye closes at 50 volts, indicating excessive leakage. Those findings are verified on the eBay LCR meter with readings of 16.45 nanofarads and a V-loss of 3.6%. Another bad capacitor. Finally, let's look at one of the precision wax capacitors. This 2 microfarad monster is rated at 150 volts. The ICO tester shows a capacitance of just over 2 microfarads. So far, so good. How about the leakage? As we slowly raise the voltage, the magic eye keeps opening up, indicating acceptable leakage. Finally, we reach a value of 150 volts and the magic eye is still open. This capacitor is still good. After shorting out the capacitor to remove residual charge, we'll test it on the eBay LCR meter. That shows a value of 2,115 nanofarads and a V loss of 0.2%. Thanks for joining me today. We resurrected a vintage ICO 950B resistor and capacitor bridge and then used it to check the parts we pulled out of it. Of the four capacitors we tested, three were bad. I'm really pleased with the results and I'm looking forward to having this unit by test instrument stable. This unit will perform high voltage leaking tests which my cheap LCR meter won't do. Plus there's a cool factor that goes with vintage electronic test gear. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. And leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get it together next time for another day in life with David. See you soon!